Hey, man. Happy to be back. Episode three. Great talk. Appreciate all the support, man. If you're watching the video right now and you're new, be sure to like, comment, subscribe. Check out the old videos as well because we got vlog, music videos, got other episodes of Great Talk. So, yeah, man, today we are coming from Romans. It's probably going to be the last video of Romans, but who knows? We'll see. So this is Romans 12 verses 1 through 1 through 2. Verses 1 through 2. It's only a couple verses. But these are important verses in our walk with God, man. All right, so look, Paul says, I appeal to you, therefore, brothers, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that by testing you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. So now renewing your mind, I know you're probably thinking, Renew your mind. How do you how do you do that? This is how you renew your mind. You got to take in the word and get rid of all of the old patterns and, and old thoughts that you used to have. Because it's really our our thoughts that lead our actions. You know what I'm saying? Like if I'm if I'm thinking about going to the gym or if I want to go to the gym, I must first have the thought of going to the gym. If, if I want to get closer to God, I must have the thought to get closer to God. If, if, if I want to if I want to stop being lazy, I must first have the thought to stop being lazy. You know what I'm saying? But but all of this is just renewing your mind. And this isn't just a one-time thing. This is a lifestyle. We have to renew our mind every day, every month, every week, every year. For the rest of our lives, we're going to be renewing our mind. You know, we're going to be building on on the foundation that has already been laid. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's like it's like you're, you're building a house. You might have built up a, a crappy house before. It might not have been a strong, fortified house. So what do you do? You knock that down, you build a nice solid foundation, and, and then you just start building on top of that. You know what I mean? And renewing your mind also makes you sharper in, in your walk. This allows you to have discernment. This might be your first time hearing about the word discernment, but discernment is just, is just another word for awareness, just being aware. Renewing your mind through the word, through the Holy Spirit. This allows you to discern what is the will of God. You know, I know a lot of the time people are like, oh my God, I, 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 don't, I don't know the will of God for my life. I don't know what he will, yeah, I don't know. Bro, get in the word. This is the will of God. If, if you don't know the will of God for your life, getting in the word is the will of God for you. And then after that, you know what I'm saying? He'll he'll start bringing opportunities your way. And then you, you'll just have to step out in faith and, and be like, all right, like, is, is this of God? Is this not of God? But all of that just comes from renewing your mind, having that mind of Christ. You know what I'm saying? The the law has already been written on our heart. Uh, this is spoken about earlier in Romans. The law has already been written on our heart. You know what I mean? But because we're, we're born in sin, you know what I'm saying? It, it's natural for us to do what is wrong. We must learn what is right. We must learn what is acceptable to God so that it's not something that we have to we have to question or worry about. It's just in us. You know what I'm saying? You ever heard you ever heard the term it's in me, it ain't on me. This this must be in you. This can't just be on you. You know what I'm saying? It's really got to be in you. And as it is in you, whatever is in you will come flowing out. You feel me? That, that's, that's also another thing. You know, there's there's people that, that claim Christ. You know what I'm saying? That claim to be children of God. We all know that's not true. According to Jane, no, John, what is it? I don't know. I think it's like John 7, 44 or something like that. Not everybody who claims to be a child of God is a child of God. But now if this word is in you, you would be able to discern who is and who is not of God. You know what I mean? You, you would be able to discern who you need to keep around you and who you need to love from a distance. You know what I'm saying? Like, I I, I got I to gotta keep my circle tight. You know what I mean? I, I've, I've been in situations where where people that I've held close stabbed me in my back, man. They straight up stabbed me, stabbed me in my back. People that, oh, brother, brother, brother this, brother, I love you, brother. Man, listen, words only mean so much, but it, 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 it's, it's important to discern. I don't go around befriending everybody. I love everybody. You know what I mean? But on the path that I'm going, I got to make sure that the people that are around me have a like mind and like spirit because I don't have time to be getting distracted. I don't have time to be to, to be worrying about somebody else carrying their burdens. You know what I'm saying? At the end of the day, other people's burdens are not your problem, bro. Other people's burdens are not your problem. God says, come to me. Give me your burdens. I will give you rest. You know what I'm saying? God didn't say, hey, go over there, give your burden to them. They're going to help you out. They're going to, no. God said, come to me. I will give you rest. Go to God with your burdens. But anyway, have discernment about who's around you, bro. The, the next five five years of your life, the place that 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 you're, that, that you are in line with, are the people around you going to help you get there or not? 
It's simple as that. Now, mind you, it's no hard feelings because you can love people from a distance, bro. You know what I mean? They're like, like, like Jesus, like, like, yes, he had 12 disciples. He had many more followers, but there was three that he held close to him. You know what I'm saying? There, there was the, the 12, I believe the seven, and then the three. You know what I mean? You got to know who's around you at all times. Romans 12, 1. I appeal to you, brothers, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. We must offer ourselves as living sacrifices to God. We, mu we must sacrifice what we find pleasure in. Let our bodies be vessels for God. Simple as that. I forgot uh, where it is. It's Romans 6, 13. Oh, 12 and 13. It says, let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body to make you obey his passions. Do not present your members, do not present your body to sin as instruments for unrighteousness, but present yourselves to God as those who have been brought from death to life and your members to God as instruments for righteousness. So this literally goes hand in hand. Present yourselves, present your bodies as a living sacrifice because because your body is, is essential to your life. You know what I'm saying? Being healthy is essential to your life. Not using your body for sin is essential to your life. Why? Because if you're eating unhealthy, your body's unhealthy, you, you might die of early age because of because of uh, a high blood pressure, because of uh, a, a die, whatever the case. And don't use your bodies for immorality. Our, our bodies are meant to are meant to be one with our spouse. You know what I'm saying? If we're giving pieces of ourselves to other people, we're not doing what is right in the eyes of God. There, there, there's a covenant that needs to be made with someone of the opposite sex so that we can be fruitful and multiply as God has commanded the way that it was meant to be done. You know what I mean? There's people out here, you know what I'm saying? Like people don't got baby daddies, you know what I'm saying? People, people be getting put on child support, bro. It's crazy, bro. Let your let your life be a living sacrifice to God because at the end of the day, it's only going to benefit you. Like what's, 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 what's the worst that could happen you become the best version of yourself you know what i'm saying through the, through the process of sanctification you don't have to you don't have to worry about what happens to your body because we know who we belong to you know what i'm saying offering your offering your body as a living sacrifice allows the glory of god to be shown through you god will use you in ways that that you have never even thought of. Like I, I would never have thought of God using me as as a vessel for healing. Example, praying over somebody and they they being healed. Never would I thought God using me as someone to speak of word of knowledge to somebody that they needed to hear right in that time. You know what I'm saying? Even with music, people be hitting me up all the time. Like bro, like I I, I love this song. This song spoke to me. We'll do it. Like bro, like that's all. God, because I've, I, I, as I said, God, I offer myself as a living sacrifice to you. I don't want to sow into the flesh. I, I don't want to do the works of the flesh. I, I want to experience the, 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 all the fruit of the spirit. You know what I'm saying? I can't name them right now. You know what I'm saying? Peace, joy, endurance. Uh, self-control you know what i'm saying all all of these things there's like five other ones man they're, they're, there's such a benefit to living for god yo you just think about it what's better being healthy in the spirit being healthy in your mind and being healthy physically bro you get these three in order mind body and spirit you get all those three lined up bro you'd be an unstoppable force for the kingdom of god no cap all three in alignment mind body and spirit there would literally be nothing that you can't do without God. Because your mind is clear, you're not going to have to worry about confusion, doubt, anxiety, sadness, none of that stuff. Because this is in your mind. Any thoughts come come in, any, any type of the thoughts that go against this are easily just going to get weeded out because there's already something living in there. Your spirit, a healthy spirit, bro, I don't even know the half, bro, because Jesus was walking around here with the presence of God just all around him, people coming up to him, touching him, boom, healed. You know what I'm saying? Je Jesus preaching, Jesus uh, 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 prophesying, a clean, casting out demons, a, a clean, strong spirit, bro. And then your body, be, being able to walk up, walk, walk up some steps and not, not have to get winded. You know what I'm saying? Just, just, just looking good, feeling good. You know what I mean? Renew your mind, offer yourself as a living sacrifice for God. Offer yourself as a vessel for the Lord, not as, as a vessel of unrighteousness. Come on, man. It's your boy, Greg. I'm out of here. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, man. We out.